This is Caitlin, who is coming to hospital for a scheduled elective cesarean section at 37 weeks gestation. This is an operation that all medical students will encounter during their obstetric and gynecology rotations. You will need to know what a cesarean section is, what instructions you use, and what the relevant anatomy is. We will be covering the anatomy of a cesarean section in approximately five minutes. To start off, a cesarean section is a surgical operation to deliver a baby transabdominally rather than transvaginally, which is the traditional delivery method. There are many indications for an elective cesarean section. They can be due to problems with the placenta, like a placenta previa, or maternal contraindications to labor, like HIV or cardiomyopathy, or baby problems, like a breech presentation transverse lie, or multiple gestations. The incisions for an elective caesarean are commonly a transverse lower abdominal incision, called a Joel Cohen incision, or a Fallenstein incision. Let's get into the anatomy that you will incise during a caesarean section. The first layer of the anterior abdominal wall deep to the skin is campus fascia, a fatty fascia layer. Underneath the campus fascia is scarpus fascia, which is a membranous fascia layer. Deep to the scarpus fascia are the muscular layers of the anterior abdominal wall. This includes the external oblique, internal oblique, and transversus abdominis. Deep to the transversus abdominis is the transversalis fascia, followed by the extraperitoneal fascia. Then you've reached the parietal peritoneum, and deep to that is the visceral peritoneum. At this point, you should have reached the uterus. This anatomy outlines the anterolateral abdominal wall, but cesareans are often mainly cutting through the midline where the rectus abdominis lies. In this part of the abdomen, the anatomy changes as a crucial plane, known as the arcuate line, which lies about halfway between the umbilicus and the pubic crest. The main change above and below the arcuate line is which muscle layers are continuous with the anterior rectus sheath, superficial to the rectus abdominis muscle, and which muscle layers are continuous with the posterior rectus sheath, which is deep to the rectus abdominis muscle. Above the arcuate line, the aponeurosis of the external oblique and part of the internal oblique continue as the anterior rectus sheath. The posterior rectus sheath is comprised of the transversus abdominis aponeurosis and the transversalis fascia layer. Below the arcuate line, where a caesarean will be, the anatomy is a bit different. Here the anterior rectus sheath is very thick as the aponeurosis of the external oblique, internal oblique, and transversus abdominis all make up the anterior rectus sheath, superficial to the rectus abdominis muscle. Posterior to the rectus abdominis is the posterior rectus sheath made up of the transversalis fascia layer. The anterior and posterior rectus sheath fuse in the midline to form the fibrous linea alba and fuse on each lateral side of the rectus abdominis muscle to form the linea semilunaris. After you slice through all of these layers, you still have to remember the anat anatomical relations of the uterus. Particularly, there is the pubic symphysis, peritoneum, bladder, and rectum. The bladder is often drained with a catheter and retracted inferiorly to reveal the gravid uterus. The bladder is anterior to the uterus while the rectum is posterior. The female reproductive tract is comprised of the vagina inferiorly, the cervix, the body of the uterus, and the fundus of the uterus. Each uterine tube or fallopian tube has an isthmus, ampulla, infundibulum, 
and fimbriae, which extend towards the ovary. The ovarian ligament connects the ovary to the uterus, while the suspensory ligaments of the ovary contain the ovarian vessels. The uterine vessels, which branch off of the internal iliac vessels, are contained within the cardinal ligament. The location of all of these structures is important, even though they are usually avoided in a cesarean. However, in a case of postpartum hemorrhage, which is an important cause of maternal morbidity and mortality, knowing the location of the uterine artery may be necessary for an artery location to stop the bleeding. And there you have it. This is your whistle stop tour of all the important anatomy you should know before you walk into your first cesarean. Caitlin had a healthy delivery of a baby boy and both mom and baby are doing well. Thank you for listening and make sure to subscribe for more content.